Good morning. Since 2001, MIT Technology Review has created a list of the 10 most important technological milestones reached every year. To compile this list, our editors selected the technologies that we believe will have the greatest impact on the shape of innovation for years to come. So how do we define breakthrough? Well, it's simple. It could be an advance. It could be an interesting interface. And it could be or an experimental device that helps save lives. And how do we go about choosing these breakthrough technologies? Well, we first we identify the problem. We then find the breakthrough or the technology. We identify the leading innovators in that space. And then we go on to explain to the audience why it matters. Our problem number one, or breakthrough number one, is cancer remains a leading cause of death. The breakthrough here is killer T cells that are programmed to wipe out cancer. These genetically engineered immune cells are saving the lives of cancer patients. And that may just be the start. These T cells display almost animal-like behavior. They crawl, they probe, they shoot toxins into other cells. They can even have a memory. Think of them as little robots. The company Selectus began developing a treatment in 2011 after doctors in New York City and Philadelphia reported that they had found a way to gain control of these T cells, these so-called killer cells of the immune system. So they took the T cells from a person's bloodstream and using a virus added new DNA instructions to aim them at the type of blood cell that goes awry in leukemia. Well, the technique has now been tested in more than 300 patients with spectacular results, and all of them in complete remission. So the availability of this, one to two years. Key players in this space, Novartis, Juno Therapeutics, Selectus. Well, why it matters, cancer, MS, and HIV could all be treated by engineering the immune system. Our next problem, or breakthrough, Climate change is increasingly damaging agricultural productivity. We need to increase our food yield by making our crops disease and drought resistant. The breakthrough here is the ability to cheaply and precisely edit plant genomes without leaving foreign DNA behind. This makes it possible that they not fall under existing regulations governing genetically modified organisms and will therefore sidestep many of the consumer concerns over GMOs. The technology known as CRISPR offers an easy, exact way to alter genes to create traits such as disease resistance and drought tolerance. The availability five to 10 years. The key players in this field, we have Seoul National University, University of Minnesota, Institute of Genetics and Developmental Biology in Beijing, and the Sainsbury Laboratory in Norwich, UK. Well, it matters because we need to increase agricultural productivity to feed the world's population, which is expected to be at 10 billion by the year 2050. There simply isn't enough food on the planet to feed all of us. Problem number three, we need more effective ways to interact with our devices. So a growing number of China's 691 million smartphone users now regularly dispense with swiping and tapping on their keyboards when they're looking up things on their country's most important and biggest search engine, Baidu. The breakthrough is combining voice recognition and natural language understanding to create effective speech interfaces for this world's largest internet market. China is an ideal place for this because Chinese characters were never designed for tiny little touch, touch screens, 
But people everywhere can benefit from this because as Baidu advances speech technology and makes voice interfaces more practical and useful for all. So recently, Baidu reached a very important milestone with its voice technology, a powerful new speech recognition engine called Deep Speech 2. So Deep Speech 2 can now recognize spoken words with stunning accuracy. So there is less need to learn a new interface every time you get a new device. The availability is right now. Our key players in this space, Google, Apple, Nuance, and of course, Baidu. Well, it matters only because it's time-consuming and frustrating to be typing with fingers on a tiny little computer. Problem number four, space travel is very expensive. Blasting things into space has become expensive because rockets cost tens of millions of dollars, and they fly once before burning up free fall back into the atmosphere. So the breakthrough here is rockets that can launch payloads into orbit and then land safely. Rockets are typically destroyed on their maiden voyage, but now they can make an upright landing and be refueled for another trip, settling the stage for a whole new era in spaceflight. The two tech billionaires that are doing this, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Elon Musk's SpaceX, these are very different companies, by the way. Um, Blue Origin hopes to propel tourists in capsules for four-minute space rides, while SpaceX already launches um, ca uh, space station and supply missions into space. So, but both need reusable rockets to improve the economics of spaceflight. And the availability is right now. So these are our key players. And it only matters because lowering the cost of flight would obviously open the door to many new endeavors in space. Breakthrough number five. Think about it this way. People don't generally have trouble picking up a glass of water or rolling up a ball of socks um, because we've generally gone through a large data collection process called childhood. But for robots to do the same type of routine task they also need access to reams of data. And traditionally, this has been done from painstakingly programming individual robots. But imagine if robots could get this information from each other. So the breakthrough here is robots that can learn tasks and send that knowledge to a cloud for other robots to pick up later. So what if robots could figure out things on their own? and share information and that knowledge amongst themselves. Availability three to five years. Our key players in this space, Brain of Things, Brown University, University of California, Berkeley, and uh, University of Darmstadt in uh, Germany. Progress in robotics could accelerate dramatically if each machine didn't need to be, have to be programmed separately, it would just make us more efficient. We need inexpensive and easy access to our genetic data if we're to take better control of our health. So a new, the breakthrough is a new business model for DNA sequencing that will make genetic information widely accessible online. Our genome holds information about our traits, our health risks, our physical traits, whom we're related to. But yet aside from these smaller little ancestry tests that provide very limited genetic information, there's not a mass market for DNA data. Then what's missing is the right business model. The company Helix collects a split sample from anyone who buys a DNA app, sequences and analyzes the customer's genes, and then digitizes the findings so they can be accessed by software developers who want to sell other apps. So Helix thinks it can decode the most important part of a person's genome, all 20,000 genes, at a cost 
of about $100, which is one-fifth of what it costs other companies. And that tactic will make genetic information available to consumers far quickly and far less expensively. Our players in this market, Helix, Illumina, Veritas Genetics. Well, it matters because a lower entry point for genetic tests could entice many consumers. And providing a foundation for new business opportunities, crowd-sourced medical research. And your genome also tells a great deal about you, including the likelihood and propensity um, for you to get a certain disease. Breakthrough number seven, highly efficient solar panels made using a simple, low-cost manufacturing process. A $750 million solar facility in Buffalo, New York, will produce a gigawatt of high-efficiency solar panels per year and make residential panels far more attractive to homeowners. So it's capable of making 10,000 panels a day, and it will be the largest solar manufacturing plant in North America and one of the biggest in the world. Our key players here, SolarCity, SunPower, and Panasonic. The solar industry needs cheaper and more efficient technology if we're to become more uh, competitive with fossil fuels. Oh, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> so problem number eight, more and more people are now getting real work done on mobile devices, and emailing is not an effective tool. The breakthrough is an easy-to-use communication software that is supplanting email as a method of getting work done. It's a service built for the era of mobile phones, and short text messaging is changing the workplace. The availability is now. These are our key players. Quip, HipChat, and Microsoft are also in the game. Well, in many kinds of workplaces, the water cooler effect um, that lets people overhear other people's conversations creates a more collaborative environment and can enhance productivity. So Slack messages tend to be short and casual and much more like the mobile text message that people are increasingly favoring over email and in their personal life. So this creates the perception that keeping in touch with your coworkers is seamless and effortless. People aren't very good drivers. In October 2014, Elon Musk's electric car company began rolling out sedans with a dozen ultrasonic sensors discreetly placed around the bumpers and the sides. For an additional $4,250, Tesla customers could purchase a technology package that uses the sensors as well as a camera and a front radar and digitally controlled brakes to avoid collisions, but essentially allowing the car to take over and stop before crashing. But mostly, between 2014 and 2016, the hardware just sat there waiting, 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 and, and gathering reams of data. A year later, the company sent a software update to their 60,000 clients, and it had sold them the, the software at the time. And the software was officially updated and named Tesla version 7, but its nickname, Autopilot, is what stuck. A car that drives itself safely in a variety of conditions. The electric vehicle maker sent its cars a software update that suddenly made autonomous driving a reality. And as we know, it's available now. Our key players here, all of the big brands, Uber, Mercedes, Ford, Google. It matters because car crashes uh, caused by human error kill thousands of people on the road every year. And finally, our final break power, breakthrough, even the smallest internet-connected devices typically need a battery or a power cord, but not for much longer. Technology that lets gadgets work and communicate using only energy harvested from nearby radio, Wi-Fi, 
and cell phone signals is really heading towards commercialization now. So the wireless gadgets that repurpose these nearby radio signals, such as Wi-Fi, to power themselves and communicate. And the principle is called backscattering. So instead of generating original signals, one of their devices selectively reflects incoming radio waves to construct a new signal. So think of it like an injured hiker that's sending an SOS message using the sun and a mirror. One version of the University of Washington technology, which is dubbed passive Wi-Fi, is being commercialized through a spin-off company called Jiva Wireless. It's let battery-free gadgets connect with conventional devices, such as computers and smartphones, by backscattering Wi-Fi signals. Availability, two to three years. Our players here, UMass, Texas Instruments, actually a company that was founded by an MIT alum and the University of Washington. Freeing internet-connected devices from the constraints of batteries or power cords will open up many new uses. So why does any of this matter? Well, new technologies solve big problems. They also expand human possibilities. But technology is not an absolute good. We must talk about how tech we want to use technology, not how we want to use be used by it. Thank you.